Leg 3. And the Volvo Ocean Race fleet is again in new waters, chasing the Indian Ocean's elusive wind shifts en route for Singapore. Behind them, the tidal clutches and currents south of Sri Lanka. Ahead, the fluky winds, tides and tight shipping lanes of the Straits of Malacca. After the charm and colour of Cochin, the fleet is back in the hunt for points and prizes. Professional reputations once more on the line. Overall leaders with two leg wins already are Torben Grail's crew on Ericsson 4. But in the lighter winds on leg 3, they may yet prove vulnerable as a familiar threat re-emerges. Taking a southerly route and a temporary lead is five-race veteran Bauer Becking on Telefonica Blue. Second overall, Becking's men are quick upwind, but if the wind shifts they need won't kick in, the scramble for the lead kicks off. So yes, looking for a right-hander. Third and fourth on the leaderboard and pressing for points after a bad leg two are US star Ken Reid on Puma's Il Mostro and double Olympic silver medalist Ian Walker heading up his first ever offshore campaign on Green Dragon. The fastest we've gone for about two days, so I'm happy. Hard on their heels are the leading pair's sister ships, Ericsson 3, skippered by Anders Luanda, and Fernando Ecovari's Telefonica Black despite navigator Roger Nilsson nearly taking the boat the wrong side of a waypoint. You tell me, you tell me, it's your call, you are the navigator, I don't know. I don't care what we have to do, I don't care. To the rear of the fleet and trailing badly are the financially challenged Team Russia and even further back Delta Lloyd, where the pressure is building on navigator Matt Gregory. Both will have to gamble big to make any impression. With the scoring gate at Pulawi fast approaching, points are up for grabs. The pace is hotting up. The battle for leg three is back on. With the fleet approaching the halfway stage of the leg, some 350 miles from the next scoring waypoint at Pulau Wee, Bauer Becking's men on Telefonica Blue are both the furthest south and the most anxious. They urgently need a clockwise rotation in wind direction to the east to consolidate their advantage over Ericsson 4 further north. An anti-clockwise rotation to the north will hand the lead and possibly the leg to Grail's men. Joining the crew to help tackle just this sort of dilemma is meteorologist Tom Addis. I want to start getting out of the south end of the north, so we're looking for a, a right-hand shift that we, uh, we were expecting. We had two, two nice ones last night and we, we stuffed up on the first one and didn't take, uh, didn't take that opportunity. And I think that's lost us a bit. But, uh, so yes, looking for a right-hander. On Ericsson 4, Addis's opposite number is watching the situation closely and reaching the same conclusions. So we're 340 miles away from the southern end of the scoring waypoint on this leg. Basically the top, top five boats all within uh, 20 miles of the lead. Telephonic and Blue's done a pretty nice job so far and have got a bit of a march on us, but we're slowly taking some small gains out of them at the moment from our uh, slightly northerly position, so hopefully it will come good for us now, but it's really touch and go whether we'll get enough distance out of them to catch them up. Time will tell, it really depends on the wind shifting four or five degrees one way or the other, I think. The weather models here aren't particularly accurate, so uh, throwing a few big clouds as well, there's uh, plenty to play for. But the slow start to the leg means there isn't plenty to eat. I tell you, I was hungry before I even started this meal. I think I'm going to be hungry afterwards. As you can see, it's um, that's a half portion. 
I'm thinking that's about six or seven spoonfuls and the good thing is uh, well, you have been able to spice it up a little bit with a bit of garlic salt so maybe that'll make it just taste that little bit better. I've also uh, been in the food bag, got my one bar for today, I'll put that in my shoe for later on and uh, well, one at the two. The mood has at least lifted on Telefonica Blue, for now. It has been very, very anxious uh, for all of us uh, actually to see if the shift is going to happen because if it wasn't going to happen then uh, we would have just been sailing and lying around and all the honest. But uh, it has happened, so so far so good, but uh, we will be way more comfortable we'll have another 24 hours to see the way she like that. Looks good, but not there until we're there. At the back of the fleet, the crew on Delta Lloyd are more concerned about the security of their boat than safeguarding their position. Ericsson are giving out telephones. They're calling each other. There's one more boat coming, Delta Lloyd. Those alarm, all the M16s are back in the deck. You never know, they can still have the guns laying there. We thought it was pirates, so we all came up on deck. We were just practicing. It's good practice. Locked in a battle with Telefonica Black for fourth place is Puma's Il Mostro, where the sudden wind shifts and constant restacking of the boat are taking their toll. It's a total pain in the neck. It's hot and it's sweaty and people aren't getting much sleep, but unfortunately it's our way of life right now. This is what we do. I feel like we're in a pinball machine in between all these little squalls. Bad time. We're in a really bad mood right now. Okay. Okay. Come here, uh, Catching us in a slightly better mood today versus yesterday. <laughs> I figured it out. I think we were averaging two squalls an hour, two plus squalls an hour, which is over 50 squalls a day. And that sucks. I don't mind telling you. The Bay of Bengal is not on my hit parade for really cool places to go sailing. So we just got another sked. We've moved ourselves back into fourth. We continue to gain on uh, Telefonica Black. Put another 1.7 miles on them. Green Dragon, three miles. We're kind of battling with Ericsson three for third place at the scoring gate. I think the other two guys have a bit of an edge on us right now. Since leaving Cochin, there's been very little media content from Ericsson 3. The reason soon becomes clear. It was about 24 hours ago you started. Yeah, yeah. yeah I uh, actually thought I was uh, one of the lucky ones. Uh, I, uh, I wasn't sick uh, in uh, India. He's had about one of the worst things you can have on a, a yacht like this, which is uh, he's been throwing up and uh, diarrhea uncontrollably. And the big danger there is uh, dehydration, um, which is uh, easy to treat on land, not so easy to treat on the boat. Dr. Mason has fixed me up now, giving me some pills. You actually have the right effects. Richard Mason's advice is not wholly unqualified. As one of two medics on board each boat, he attended a refresher course in the treatment of the most common injuries before the start of leg one. So the idea again with the stapling is just to get the, the skin edges together. Beautiful. It doesn't hurt, but it looks like it should hurt. Yeah, that's quite a little one. I'm just yeah, going for that bigger one up there. Yeah. We can only hope they've, they've already gone through some training, and part of our criteria is that they can actually cannulate before they go out on the boats. So we hope that they've had an opportunity to practice. Some medics will have done more so than others, and it will depend very much on the teams. Some have spent time in an A&E department, and others will have just gone through some formal training. The best trained of all is Telefonica Black's Roger Nilsson, a former orthopaedic surgeon. But working in a comfortable room on shore is one thing, below decks quite another. Even for a trained medic there are times when finding a vein in someone can be quite difficult. I think an advantage that we have some young fit guys who we'll tend to find that they can find the veins easier. Can we see your wounds? And if that's in the crease of the cell, a little bit more done away. That's good clean needles. It's much better to have a... But if it's something you're not trained in, and then you're bouncing around, and it's not about a controlled situation here, it's then taking that one to the boat, and then managing to actually try and find a vein whilst you're moving around. There's a trust thing, and everyone trusts everyone, and 
Yeah, it's just a team. You're gonna you're gonna live and fight together. So you do all you can to help people out. When Chris Nicholson injures his finger on Il Mostro, Shannon Falcone is called upon to put his training into practice. Okay, I'm going to just flip it back down, all right? Nicola? Yep. There you go. It's done. It's done. It's done. Ouch! That must have hurt. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to be all right. It's just going to be minus a little pinky for a while. I actually have to have a lay down here, guys. Yeah, okay. I'm gonna Delta Lloyd's ambitions, meanwhile, are about to suffer a major blow. Down below. Should be down below. What's going on? Should be down below. Definitely down below. Okay. Over 120 miles from the leader, the crew on Delta Lloyd is laboring across the Bay of Bengal, a little over halfway into leg three. Something, somewhere has failed below deck and they've yet to find it. Okay. 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 It's also cracked here and cracked there. And and the both bottom. sides coming off. And it's ripped up the laminate from the interior of the. It's it's all done, yeah? We certainly are going to head towards the gate, towards the top of the Malacca Straits um, as best we can. I guess if we can, um, if we can ease the pressure up on the port side and load up the starboard side, then we can um, sail along a little bit and keep going as best we can. And then if we get to the top there, it's just, we can motor the rest of it out. Right now, I'm just looking at a couple options of where we can either go into a port, get more gas, okay, get support, all sorts of different things. The uh, key is almost uh, in the middle of the moment. Thailand is the place we can go. Six degrees of um, is right now. Yeah, you know, we're trying to get all the way to Singapore if we can. Uh, different places in Malaysia or in Indonesia. So right now we're still just trying to figure it out. We're not racing, we're not sinking, so, okay. Hey, uh, Stu, do you reckon you should call Jerm? I spoke to him already. What we're doing right now is just stabilizing the whole thing. The guys have got some sail back up. The uh, keel is, it's got six degrees to weather. So uh, we just want to stabilize this unit here and uh, stop the ramp from moving traverse their across and puncturing the hull if at uh, some eventuality, for some reason, excuse my French, that this uh, ram gives out, then at least we don't puncture, you know, retain our uh, hull integrity. For us, the priority here is to keep our... Uh, at the front of the fleet, meanwhile, the lead has changed hands. Telefonica Blue's clockwise wind shift proves short-lived. The wind backs to Ericsson 4's advantage, 
and it's Torben Grail's men who now lead the fleet in the race to the island of Pulawi, the scoring waypoint off the northern coast of Sumatra. The closest battle is the one raging for fourth and fifth. With Ericsson three in third place, Puma attacks fourth place Telefonica Black, who are hampered by a problem with a broken halyard. Theirs is a duel that has already lasted over 1,300 nautical miles. Fernando Ecovari's crew have been unable to use their larger jib for over 12 hours. Bowman David Vera is hauled up to the mast to try to retrieve the halyard and get their boat back up to speed. the decision first. He does. <laughs> he does. <laughs> and uh, Dep depends whether they get the right way or the wrong way. If it's no. the right way I make it. <laughs> For skipper Ian Walker and new navigator Steve Hales on Green Dragon, the damage to be repaired is more tactical. Still stuck in sixth place, they're struggling to get on turns with the leaders. One place behind Green Dragon is Team Russia and new crew member Scott Gray sailing his first ever Volvo Ocean Race leg. What day is it? It's laundry day today. <laughs> we next we're getting a bit sweaty and smelly. Well, we might should just had a big um, hydraulic leak in the front of the boat. I guess that's horrible stuff. It just gets everywhere. It doesn't really want to come off. You need a specialty greaser normally to clean it up. It's not too flash for your skin either. Um, so I think we'll need to go do some uh, personal hygiene. It's time to go to the toilet. We, we are not dirty people on our boat. It's, it's always clean and nice, the toilet. Even everyday tasks can be demanding on a Volvo Open 70. With Gustav Morin now up and about on Ericsson 3, Magnus Olsen provides a user's guide to an area of the boat the media crewman now knows all too well. But you have to hold on because in the waves, if the waves are really big, you, you're going to fall off the toilet. So you have to have it and the right gimbal. Otherwise, you, you get the you get water back up your ass. And then you can pump out a little bit in the meantime. But you, since this creates a vacuum, you, you cannot. You have to get the, the air in between your legs. If you if you completely close there, your your whole ass will drag down the toilet. You have to use on one hand to wipe your ass. So you can only hold on with one hand. And you have to flush 49 times. Why 49? Because I was born 1949. If you're young, you, you don't have to flush as many times. I don't know why, but that's the rules. Okay? And then you take this thing. You don't want to have sickness here. Bugs and shit starting here. Okay? And then you have to turn off the light. And you're ready. Up ahead, the battle between the leading boats for the maximum four points at Pulau Wi is about to be settled. A steady northeasterly breeze over the last 24 hours has left only one outcome. So, Torben, leg three, scoring weight point first. What you got to say about that? Well, nothing to say, it's just to celebrate. It was a very difficult uh, leg up to here, and uh, we expect we're even more difficult from here to the finish. Grail's crew extend their overall points tally to 30. Just under an hour later, Telefonica Blue earns three and a half points to take theirs to 22 and a half to stay second overall. 95, 20. Here it's uh, four beaters, uh, that's a bummer. But of course the good thing is you beat all the other ones. Uh, second place is not the bad. Uh, a big call that we have to make right now is if we go offshore or we exceed tech and go towards the, towards the finish line. Right now we're heading uh, offshore because we think the easing cars won't be very good. Of course, uh, we have to see how that will pan out, but uh, so far we've made all the right calls in the legs, so I'm pretty confident what we're doing. The battle for third at the gate is even closer. 
and as Luanda's crew on Ericsson 3 holding off Ken Reed's men on Il Mostro by just 20 minutes to secure the extra half point. Telefonica Black is coming under pressure from Green Dragon in the fight for fifth place. Debris on the keel isn't helping. We are very close to land, basically. We are uh, one mile, 2,000 meters from land, so there is lots of lights, Indonesia close by. Fernando Ecavari's crew eventually holds on to secure two points. Very, very shortly, we're going to cross the uh, gate, take the time there to cross the gate, 2016-00. Yeah. Over 1,400 miles of leg three have been completed. Some 550 remain. To reach Singapore, the fleet now has to negotiate the Straits of Malacca, an area notorious for light shifting winds, strong currents, heavy commercial traffic, pirates and fishing nets. Here's a good example of a net. You can see the uh, flag and the boat in the distance. With all the little markers in between. Ericsson 4 extends its lead to over 40 miles when the breeze dies further north, only to see their advantage halved in the next 12 hours. Telefonica Blue briefly loses second place to Ericsson 3, but quickly recovers as the chasing boats are joined by Puma in what is becoming a supreme test of nerve and tactical nous. We're sailing into a, a new region which is dominated by land breezes and sea breezes. It's sort of 8 o'clock in the morning and we've just got a little pulse off, off the land here, 030. Puma, we've got into the pressure before them, so hopefully we can put a put a mile or so on them. Hopefully we're on our bikes now. It's, we still want to get closer to the coast where the sea breeze is going to be better than the land breeze tonight. After staying too long in the middle of the straits, Ericsson 4 stalls, heading back towards the Malaysian coast. The chasing three boats, meanwhile, have been fighting for every inch further inshore, and after eight hours of sea breeze, their efforts are duly rewarded. Actually got the whole fleet just around us. Last position, four four came in with a 15 mile gain on E4. We just spotted uh, just the weather up here. We got uh, E3 right on our transom, and uh, Puma found the low road down there, so uh, the games begin. Big loss for us. It's about 200 miles to go, so uh, we feel like a race restart, but we're starting in fourth. You never know. If they can get past us, we can get past them. When darkness falls, the struggle for the lead gets tighter still. Just get the light up. One boat length away. Are we are on the ley line there. Yeah. Yeah. Any time we can dive with the Ready, Pepper? Okay. Here we go. Bit of action. Yep. That was very close, eh, Bowie? It was very close. You had to avoid a collision, so we shouted protest. Los estribor ya Ericsson ha murado a babor, ha debido pues eso, pues, pillar sin, sin gente en cubierta o lo que sea, nosotros luchamos, nosotros luchamos y casi nos chocamos. Menos mal que al final ha metido un cañazo y, y bueno, nosotros hemos arribado y no nos hemos chocado, pero... Leg 3 now has just 120 miles left to run. The lead seemingly changing with every position report. Four boats are left in the running. Eight points are up for grabs. 
Singapore and Christmas will have to wait a little longer. Now we're drifting, and here we are drifting with four boats within four miles of each other, and we are in the leading pack. Ericsson 4 is right there behind us, Ericsson 3 is right in front of us, and right in front of them is Telefonica Blue. And uh, it's going to be a wild finish to a wild leg, I guess. That's exactly what, how it should be. 